Hello, I'm Greg, and it's another tunnel take. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be smoking from my uh, Mr. Brog, my stretch, Mr. Brog Morda. I do like this pipe. It's got a, it's got a good hand feel. Uh, look at the rustication that's going on in there. It's a uh, uh, Morda pipes. Usually, when they sandblast them, the, the hard greens get left really high, and the soft greens cut out. So, uh, so, it, so it has a good grip to it, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna be smoking some of this uh, Black Knight. Black Knight. I don't know who gave this to me. Somebody gave it to me. Got a real good aroma to it for sure. Got a Sleepy Hollow, Molto Duce, uh, Duce, Duce, or whatever it's called, aroma, and not half as wet as that subtle aromatic stuff is. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about, um, well, first of all, let's talk about log splitters that don't, that don't work like they're supposed to, <laughs> where they get some age on them and break, you know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was out there splitting logs uh, yesterday evening, and, um, and I about finished, uh, and, um, and I was going to, uh, Moved the splitter, and um, because I had a great, a, a bunch of great big chunks off to the right side, you know, that I cut up, and, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to get them up on the log splitter, so I was going to have to split all the logs that were, you know, uh, 20 inches around or less, something I could pick up and put on the splitter while it was in its horizontal position, but then the splitter will tilt, will swivel up. And then I can take the great big ones and just roll them over there to the log splitter, and it'll be the the bottom uh, stop will be on the ground, and the, the, the knife blade will go through with the cylinder pushing it uh, with with them with the big chunks on the ground. Anyway, so I went to move this thing, and, and the whole the whole um, eye beam and cylinder assembly and 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 uh, uh, control mechanism came off the uh, frame, and I, it was a it was a uh, it was a, um, the, the pivot bolt broke, and it looked like a fresh break, you know, I don't know what kind of pressure that bolt's on, really, besides just holding the weight of the thing, but, you know, uh, enough time and enough vibration and all that stuff, yeah, you see the, you see the picture of the broken bolt and, and all, and, um, oh, okay, yeah, I'm back, yeah, maybe that thing will hold it now, but, um, you know, I was talking to Relax Piper tonight, and, um, and he said, I haven't seen you use your uh, Honest Lighter lately. And I've been having it in this box right here for when I go off places, you know. And I just don't go off enough to to keep in this box, really. I like the lighter so good. But um, we were talking about the, the lighter and just butane lighters in general and how they... Uh, how they'll uh when it's cold the the the, uh, the flame gets light you know when it's warm it'll get it'll get tall long like, long like that but anyway uh yeah so anyway back to my log splitter story i ended up getting that one and and everything's working right and all that stuff i don't know where i left off with that story but um Black Knight K N I G H T. Good stuff. Yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah, um, Oh, nice go up into a house and uh, they had this solid white Christmas tree I mean if you guys have ever seen a solid white Christmas tree in a house that's that, that the ambiance of the lighting is just right it's a beautiful sight I tell you what it really is it looks so clean so pristine you know especially if you get some 
some silver balls on it and stuff like that. It, it it's a really pretty thing for sure. But uh, when I, when I came in, I said, "Wow, a a, uh, a white Christmas tree." And I said it kind of like that because you know, as old as I am, I'm more of a traditional guy, you know. And uh, and in the room there's a bunch of millennials there, and and uh, and uh, after I said that, I struggled with conversation with one of the guys there, but I heard some of the people off to the side mention, uh, well, yeah, I like white Christmas trees, but, but I like black Christmas trees too. And it was kind of funny <laughs> listening to that, to this thing about, oh, I'm not racist though, you know, now a Christmas tree is racist, you know. <laughs> it, was it was funny, it was really, really um, uh, humorous to a old, I'm not a boomer, but... That's what they called me. <laughs> oh, Daddy the Boomer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was funny. You know. Hey, Ben, can you turn that fan on, this fan over me, on? Hit it, hit it one time and cut it off and turn it up again. It'll turn on, on high then. Uh, you know, um, there was a... Let's talk about race just a minute. Um, some people tend to say well watch you your your status on race and thoughts on race and stuff like that has to do with how you were brought up by your parents and stuff like that you know well mm, yeah to an extent I'm sure everything has something to do with the uh, nurturing part but a lot, a lot of things have, have to do with just your simple uh, experiences, you know. Really, you know. I know some people who uh, who deal with um, uh, or like are like in um, uh, the legal realm of things, and um, and they start getting pretty hard towards certain races you know and um because that's that's the they see the worst of that you see what i mean and and when you see the worst of something that's just what your mind turns into be we we uh with my boys were in, in the boy scouts and all and um we had a, a assistant scout master uh and um and um, our main scoutmaster was planning an outing. There, there was a there was a place that we were, that we were, we were, we were going to go with the boys with uh, too, and uh, and they had canoes and big swampy pond areas, you know, and all this stuff. And uh, and um, the assistant scoutmaster he had he had he had. Uh, mainly in his life was an EMT guy, you know. So, um, he saw the most careless people, probably. You know, his, his experience with humanity was people that do things carelessly and get hurt, and they, they have to go patch up, you know. And, and that's, oh, shoot, there it goes again. And that's and that's his experiences. You know, that's just his his uh, what he knew about about people. You know, I mean that that was that was what um, what his experiences were with humans. You know, so um, anyway. Uh,
comes up where we're gonna we're, we're planning this this outing this weekend outing type thing and, and uh, the assistant scoutmaster says yeah but there's alligators in that in that water and and uh, and the, the main scoutmaster he kind of gets fed up with this other guy is uh, worrying about safety issues all the time you know and he says we're right in, right in the back of a church you know that's where we're he says damn it there's lions there's tigers there's bears out there what are we gonna do sit home we're gonna have a camp out in the back of the in the room of the back room of the church you know he boy, he said, Ooh, boy I tell you what he got fed up with that and uh, in, in our in our scout group, our kind of like our motto, what we operated off of was was um, uh, it is our job as as adult scout uh, leaders to watch over the, the kids, the boys, to the point that they don't kill themselves. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, it was it was that much hands off. We wanted them to get some experiences, some some dangerous experiences. Some of the people may get hurt, but they'll learn massive amounts from it. And most of the time, people people wouldn't get hurt. They they would see it. these 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 children weren't dummies. You know, they had parents that cared about them to start with, and was willing to have spend time with them. You know, and be their scout, be be a scout leader. You know, I spent my many a night in a tent with the boys, not with the boys, but. Because at that, at that, back in them days, uh, uh, the scout, the adults couldn't sleep next to the, next to the tents of the of the children, of the kids, you know, the boys, you know, which is which is good. And uh, anyway, yeah. So a lot of stuff has to do with your experiences, you know. What's been your experiences? Where I came from. I live in a black community. Where I came from, the blacks there were massively different than the blacks of where I live in this black community. The black com blacks in this community are homeowners. They're homeowners. They, 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 they work their lives. They retired from their jobs. They were responsible their whole life, you know. And they resent these people other sections of their own, own culture that makes them look bad, you know. I was at a community meeting one time, and uh, uh, across the road from me, behind the houses, across the road from me, is all low-income housing over there. And I was at one of our community's uh, meetings, and, um, and, uh, you know, I'm another whitey there, you know, and uh, and I, so I just when when raises comes up, I just sit back. I don't say nothing. You know, I'm I'm just a bug on the wall, you know, and uh, and they started talking about the the people that live over there, and that's how they said it. They them over there, you know, and 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 they said I remember a quote from one of these said they're that's 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 they're different people over there. That's them, you know. That's that's uh. Them, them over there that, that don't respect property lines uh, and that sort of thing and just uh, disorderly you know renters are generally that way transient types you know you know they bounce from one place to the other and people over there apparently uh, half of them that live in the apartments areas uh, stay about three months until they until they get kicked out because we didn't even pay the first month's rent, you know, and uh, bounce to the next spot, I guess, or where, whatever. But it was interesting. It was interesting hearing these blacks in my community refer to those over there, those people over there. It was that type of thing, you know, and uh, when when you really when it really boils down. I, about, I don't know, six, seven years ago, I had a friend of mine, and she was a police, um, a city police uh, in another city, and 
she taught me a lot. Of course, I ask her a lot. You know, like I say, I, I, I make I make things very personal with uh, people uh, real quick because I want to know what what's on her mind. I, the only way I can grow is find out things that I don't know about, you know, or or that I want to know more about, you know. And um, and I said, and I was talking about race stuff and and this this sort of thing. She said, well, Greg, it's at this point in history, everything now has turned into totally socioeconomic. You have socioeconomic levels. And yes, uh, this socioeconomic level way up here, it mostly consists of whites because these are the CEOs and families of CEOs and stuff. And then you got these, these, these underlying levels, you know, and, uh, and uh, of, of, of incomes mainly is what it is, socioeconomic, you know, and uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a great, that was a great person to be able to chit chat back and forth with, that's for sure, no doubt about it. Anyway, so yeah, so yeah, that's how I got my uh, log splitter back together, uh, in, uh, engine hoist and hoisting that thing that, that I beam up and uh, getting it lined up with the hole down there and putting a new bolt through and then I was able to uh, uh, put it in its vertical position this evening and, and split the great big ones. I was kind of like split them in half or, or, or quarters, you know, and then then put the, uh, the, uh, the splitter back in its horizontal position that I, I could pick them up and split them up into little pieces and throw the pieces over the pile and that sort of thing. Anyway, well, you guys have a good night. I'll see you later. Bye.